So there's a recent study that apparently discovered the most hardcore praying mantid in the world. Praying mantids are fascinating creatures. They're really large insects, and they have an elongated forebody and a triangular head, with two large eyes and a mouth lined with sharp teeth and mandibles, each sitting at the corner of its triangular head. Most formidably, the arms of the praying mantid are large and powerful, with a folded, saw-blade morphology that allows them to catch and hold prey, even really large, relatively powerful prey. In the wild, mantids mostly eat insects. They'll eat virtually any bug that they can get that won't poison them, but their preferred food is flies and other squat, juicy bugs shaped kind of like that. Now, there's a few reported cases of mantids eating vertebrates, but these haven't come from wilderness observation. They've come from having mantids in an enclosed area with a small vertebrate, like a tiny lizard, a tiny frog, or tiny mice. There's a little more evidence for mantids preying on small birds, particularly hummingbirds, but the general preference remains insects. After all, insects are much easier to catch and eat, and they don't really fight back, and they don't pose as much of a risk like a, a cornered mouse or a trapped lizard. The paper that I want to tell you about, which was published in the Journal of Orthoptera Research, discussed some observations that were made in the private rooftop garden of a home in Karnataka, India. In this private garden, elevated to an upper floor, a wild mantid of the species Hyradula tenuindentata was seen to regularly come by during hunting hours and hunt for fish. The authors of the study said that during this observation, they did not manipulate or interfere with the mantid. They only observed it from a non-intrusive distance, for six-hour blocks between 6.30 p.m. and 12.30 a.m. This uh, late evening, early night is usually when mantids hunt, and this individual mantid that they were observing was no different in that respect. He came out to hunt late in the evening and uh, early in the night. But this adult male mantid was different in how he hunted. Instead of preying on flies and other insects, he had developed a taste for vertebrate flesh. Within this private garden, there was a large ceramic bowl that was filled with water and about 40 individual guppy fish, and floating atop the water was a layer of water lilies and cabbage lilies. This male mantid would stride out across the lilies and use his arms to catch the guppies. He was observed pulling them out of the water and chewing on the nearest part of the fish that he could or that he wanted to. Sometimes he started with the head and at the fish's gasping face as it still lived. Other times he started eating with the tail, and the way he would have to hold the fish to do that meant that it often kept the fish's head underwater so that the fish was still breathing and alive as its tail and pelvic region was being chewed up by this mantid. Other times, the mantid would just scoop up a fish in both arms and dig into its side and dip its mandibles in the fish's ribs and guts. The details of this hunting pattern and the consumption style is pretty gnarly, but there's a lot of really cool implications here. Over the course of five days of observation, the mantid consistently returned, and he hunted an average of about two fish a day, for a total of nine fish consumed out of the original 40 that were held captive in the pool. He didn't return on the sixth day, and the researchers took their notes home and wrote up their paper. They worked out and formalized the implications of their observations, which I'll explain now in the order of increasing incredibleness, or badassness. So first, this species of mantid is clearly hungry. It ate the equivalent of a bag of protein the size of its thorax twice a day for four days in a row, with a ninth fish eaten for good measure on the fifth day. That equivalent number of calories eaten from insects would presumably take much longer to acquire because you have to chase down all of these individual insects, and that might cost more energy to do, because the mantis has to run around chasing its prey, as opposed to with these captive fish, it's literally just picking them out of a small enclosed pool of water. The fish are trapped there, the mantid doesn't have to run anywhere, it can just take its time. So there's an ecological implication here because the mantid decreased the fish population by almost 25%. And these fish eat nearby aquatic and lily-dwelling insects. So it's not like this is an anomaly or a fluke. This is a consistent feeding behavior that has a non-trivial ecological influence. 
Second, the researchers speculated on the mantid's vision. Now, we know that mantid's eyes are, quote, apositional, sensitive to movement, and adapted to vision mostly in daylight, unquote. But this mantid, this uh, male with the unique hunting strategy, quote, was able to see and catch fish under the water at night and to overcome refractive challenges, unquote. So what this means is that, as far as we can tell, this mantid showed remarkably superior vision to other mantids, as he was engaging in behaviors that involved water distorting light and creating a visual illusion as to where the fish actually was. The mantid was able to see past this illusion to catch the fish repeatedly, which would suggest that at least this species of mantid needs to have its visual capacity reassessed. Because if this guy is any, any metric to go by, it's more powerful than we may have given them credit for. Now third, and most intense, the researchers speculated on the intelligence and the learning capacity of the mantid. They say, quote, The predation was not just occasional, but repeated. This scenario, from a more speculative perspective, suggests the possibility that the insect learned from the experience where and what to hunt. Mantids are known to use aversive learning to avoid toxic prey, a first basic learning ability that's shared by many predators. This case, however, suggests a further step to a more articulated cognitive process, including the ability to learn not only from a single stimulus, but from different environmental clues and experiences for elaborate new hunting strategies. Many mantids, including Hyradula, are known to be sit-and-wait predators and there is evidence that at least some species carefully choose their habitats and hunting field. Remembering the prey's abundance at a particular site in relation to their ease of capture and their nutritional content could be one important factor of this choice, and may indirectly influence individual fitness. This should be investigated in further studies. Unquote. To summarize these findings, Researchers made the first well-documented, semi-wild observation of a praying mantid hunting and eating vertebrates. Not on a fluke, not by chance, not because the mantid was kept in an enclosed area with a vertebrate that it could then antagonize and attack, but it deliberately and repeatedly returned to the same hunting ground for the easy, calorie-dense food. This means that praying mantids, or at the very least this species, have more of an ecological impact than we may have thought initially. And they also have better vision than we thought. And they might have more intelligent brains and a better learning capacity than we originally gave them credit for. This is all really cool stuff, and I really want to see what future studies discover about all of this. Oh.